Boom! Boom. What, what up, people? Whoa, I'm, I'm so excited. excited. This, this is so crazy. crazy. I, I just, just love doing, doing this. this. This is one of my one of my favorite things to do. Is to pass down knowledge to you. Is to hang out with you. To get to talk to you about about the status of the industry, about the business of music, about uh, you know potential possibilities, strategies, things that we can do uh, together. Uh, what, what can, can I, I say? Music, music entrepreneur, entrepreneur, man, is growing, is growing, it's growing big, big time. This is doing its thing. I'm really, really excited. Uh, you know, it's, it's one of those things where um, um, I, I, I get to really enjoy um, moving this along, and uh, I have a lot of people that are coming into the, into the, into the place right now. Let's see. Um, so, um, before I get started, um, Mark Fraser is one of uh, the, the main speakers today. Um, I might have uh, one or two special guests. But I really wanted to dive into syncing and licensing because um, I think that syncing and licensing is, is, is incredible. It's a, it's a huge uh, money maker today for artists. Uh, and it's, it's actually... Um, there's, uh, most independent artists don't really know how to go about um, becoming a part of that whole vertical. By vertical, that, I mean that revenue vertical. So I wanted to make sure that um, that we got the, to me, the expert in in uh, synchronizing and licensing your music. Uh, he's going to be with us uh, very shortly. So um, I'm, I'm just extremely proud to to work, work with this man, man to, to, to get, get to know him and, and to hear uh, from him directly uh, all the things that um, that um, you know that are happening in that world you know uh, it's, it's not an easy world to get into so that's why you got it you got to have people like him coming along and and really you know moving things along man because because it's not difficult it's not easy i mean everything is difficult in this industry but if you have the right strategic allies uh then it makes things a little easier i'm gonna lower the music here just so that um we get to um to get right to it and so let's see let me bring him on right now and uh And uh, what's up, Mark? I know we've got Mark. We got a few other people here online. Um, oh yeah, he's muted, but he'll be on in a second. Um, let's see. Boom! He should be coming on coming on soon. Uh, really excited! Really excited to. Um, to let you guys know what is happening all the updates that we have about music entrepreneur 2020 and notice i said music entrepreneur 2020 i didn't say music entrepreneur conference 2020 so um i think it's important you guys know that there's so much more happening this year with the music entrepreneur brand and so um, I think is is you know it's important that you guys understand that this is this is a major uh, a major um, situation happening. We're we're moving things along. We're going to our next level. Um, we're excited to introduce a few key players this year. Keep make sure you keep hydrated. Very important this year, um, as we know, climate change has happened. And so <clears throat> there's gonna be a, it's gonna be a lot hotter this summer, by the way. News flash. Sorry about that. <laughs> so um, what can I say? Uh, currently working on a record behind me, so that's pretty cool, pretty exciting. Um, I'll let you guys hear that in a, in a little bit. Um, working with it, with a songwriter, singer songwriter called uh, her name is Andy. She's brilliant, and uh, just beginning to produce a record uh, with her. Um, so I'm really excited about that collaboration and um, you know we had an incredible 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 Super Bowl event um, hosted at Nolan Carroll's house our business partner it was an incredible um, 
incredible situation. Um, I'm really, really excited about um, what is happening and what is transpiring with with our company. Um, our Super Bowl event, like I said, was just ridiculous, and uh, I don't know. It's uh, it's uh, it's a beautiful thing. Um, can 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 you text Mark? I don't know that word. Oh yeah, um, extremely, extremely, extremely happy about uh, what is happening. Uh, but let me give you some updates. So I was in LA a few weeks ago and the craziest thing happened. Um, I don't know if you guys have ever been to Soho House, but Soho House is amazing. I, I love it. I love going there. Every time I go, I meet incredible, incredible people. Have the best time ever. And um, well, I met someone that just blew my mind. I'm, I'm a huge fan of um, um, of this gentleman right here. I, I think what I'm going to do is I'm, I'm going to show you guys a picture of him. Because I think if you guys see him, uh, I think you guys will know exactly who I'm talking about. So, before I say his name, I'm going to show you his image. I love this guy and the things that these two this duo does is just unreal this is my favorite songwriting team uh, and yeah what can I say this guy is um, a beast all right so let me know if you guys can see that boom right there on the on on the right hand uh, left side of Bruno Mars is Philip or Phil Smees but Philip Lawrence is, is an incredible 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 songwriter uh, incredible human being uh, which is dope you know sometimes you meet these people and you don't know what to expect but the truth is that it turned out that he's an incredible human being got to know him, got to spend time with him uh, and uh, more importantly um, he verbally made a commitment to be at Mecon this year sharing some information with you sharing some incredible uh, insights I mean this guy um, this is the real deal you know this guy went through through everything you can imagine to make it in the business from sleeping on people's couches to walking miles and miles to get to a studio i mean the, his story is just incredible and him and bruno mars have written some of the biggest songs of all time uh and of course you know you can see him uh you know performing with bruno uh you can see him uh of course at every award uh every time they win a grammy you, you know they're together um this is the duo there's no i don't think there's there's a mars for the Bruno Mars, there's no Mars without with a Phil. So, uh, what a privilege for us to get to know him. Uh, what a privilege! I'm, I'm like so messed up. I'm kind of like committing him, <laughs> uh, just based on our on our amazing conversation and our time together. But more importantly, what he said is that anything that he can do to give back to the independent artist, to to the to the people that are. Uh, in the struggle that are trying to make it uh, any hope that he can give any stories that he can tell you he's going to share those with you this year so I'm really really excited about it I'm actually humbled by the opportunity to work with him uh, and uh, yeah now looking forward to to could you imagine I mean uh, uh, his his publishing checks must be crazy <laughs> I mean not for nothing but I'm, I'm just saying Phil, Phil Smees and, and Bruno Mars, those checks got to look crazy. So, um, all right, so on the line, we have the one and only Mark. Hold on. Or to, to, could you imagine? I mean, uh, hold on a second. Um, his his yeah, okay, publishing Jim. checks must be just crazy. Just let me know when you can hear me. <laughs> yeah, mean, yeah, I got you. Nothing, but I'm just saying, Phil, Phil Smees and, and Bruno Mars, those checks got to Boom, I can hear you okay, perfect. I got you, you are live. 
Wonderful. That's great. Okay. Well, guys, thank you so much for having me here today. Jalen, it's always a pleasure to see you and to talk to you. So, uh, you know, I'm glad to uh, spend a few minutes with you, possibly share some knowledge and uh, talk a little bit about uh, some of the things we do here in the business. I know. I know. I know. I, you know, I was just saying before you came on, uh, kind of like just sharing a little bit about, um, you know, the, the, you know, sync business is a business that a lot of independent artists don't have all that. You know, they don't really get a lot of knowledge, um, and they don't really understand how it actually works. And so, um, every time that I get a chance to hear more and more from you and from the folks that you come along or you bring along, you know, even I, I, me knowing the business and being in the business and being able to have the contacts that I have, no matter what, I get that opportunity. I take it because uh, you can never learn enough. You can never meet uh, enough people. Uh, and number two, I think that uh, that if you haven't done it, if you're a viewer that has not been to a sync summit or a sync event, you're you're leaving a lot of money on the table. That's all I can say. This is quite an invest an investment that you got to do for yourself. It's something that you need to do today because that's a vertical, a revenue vertical that you're not even touching. And so. Uh, most people think that uh, Mark, that you know, they're gonna put out a, a song and go viral in three minutes, and <laughs> and then that's it, right? Well, I mean, you know, the business uh, business is a very difficult one to uh, first of all get yourself heard. I mean, it's easier than ever to set yourself up to get distributed, to get on the DSPs, to do everything that you need to do to put the building blocks together so that you can be heard. But I think the problem is like going between having all those building blocks together and then connecting your music to different markets and ultimately to audiences because if you don't. It, do that effectively then you're not going to end up um, connecting with anybody you're not going to end up making any money you're not going to end up getting your music heard and um, when you look at the marketplace right I think one of the most important ways that you can generate revenue and you can get your get your music into a place where people can hear it on a massive scale is by having it in a TV show or a film a game an ad working with a brand all of these different areas are what we call sync or composing for um, composing for uh, video or composing for different types of media. And uh, just to start off, to give you an idea of what synchronization is, synchronization is very simple. It's just synchronizing a piece of music with another piece of media. It's usually a visual or interactive piece of media. And those licenses um, can pay very well. And depending on where your music is um, placed, uh, it can actually be heard by millions of people wow. time and time and time again. So there's a lot of benefits to um, having your music sync. The question you know that I'd like to answer today is, how does that business work? And what are the building blocks and the steps that you need to take in order to position yourself so that you can succeed in this business? That's that's great. Uh, so let's start with that. Let's say I'm, you know, I'm, I have a song. I just wrote an, an amazing song, and um, you know, uh, I mean, let's say it's it's a great song. Let's say I, I have a song. Or in this case, in in, the, in real life, my artist uh, and I are producing an incredible song. So. Uh, what happens right. with that song as an independent artist? What can I do? What is the first step? Take me through the first steps that I should take as, as an independent artist. Uh, and, and I mean, okay. pretend like I don't know anything. Pretend like just came to the studio, made a fresh song. What do I do? Okay, so let's start before you made the song. The first thing that you should do before you made the song is make sure that if you have anyone in the studio with you or if you have any people who are writing any portion of the song, that before you start off in the studio, you figure out what your splits are. You come to an agreement. If you're the only songwriter, it's easy. There's 100% that belongs to you. But if you have some people who have been collaborating with you on the creation of a piece of music, it's really important at the beginning to know uh, what percentage is owned by each person because that question could come up after you um, end up uh, getting your music licensed. And it's very important that you know, you're able to go back and know who gets what. It will so definitely be that's, a question. That's the first thing. Mm -hmm. 
okay now that you've gotten yourself into the studio just make the best music that you can that's the easiest thing that i can say to you you know if you make you just go in there and you're just creative and you make good music i'm not going to say to you you need to go into a studio and you need to create music that's specific for sync um that's not what a lot of um music supervisors per se want to hear from you they want to hear if you're going to license music they want to hear your best music now with that said and not getting too complicated if you wanted to work with let's say a production house who's asking for stings or uh stems or instrumentals or 15 45 60 second uh, clips of a particular song and you're willing to work on that process to do exactly what they ask you for that's a little bit different of a competency and then that's basically doing something that's like a work for hire yeah and uh something and something that is a little different from sitting down with a band or sitting down as an artist and writing a song that you want to license so you have to sort of say to yourself okay when i'm in the studio unless i want to do something that's specific for um production libraries or specifically composing for a project i'm going to go and make the best music i can the same thing that i always do great now, advice once you're done with that great advice once you're done with that thank you now once you're done with that the next step that you're going to have to take is make sure that your music is at a high level of mixing and if you have the time and the ability or if you work with some of the maybe some of the online services or a proper mastering engineer uh you should get it mastered because that definitely makes a difference in terms of what people hear and what they what they um what they're evaluating then the next thing is um make sure that you've got good metadata that's something that's really important yeah. because if you send out something to somebody or if you give it to somebody like me who's a licensing agent and you don't have all of the information there um then nobody's going to be able to get back to you they're not going to know what the track is they're not going to know who to pay all of these things are very important for you at the beginning to think about um and a lot of people when they send out music they don't think about that they will send out a piece of music that says track one that'll be all the metadata that we get i swear i've had that happen to me so many different times it's a really bad idea to do that that's um, insane to a sync agent to a sync agent it's not that bad but it, sending it out to a music supervisor they're just going to throw it away now um what you need to do as a minimum <clears throat> is to put in your name as an artist the name of your act if you are part of a band mm -hmm. um who your performance rights organization is that's like BMI ASCAP CSAC um who your publisher is if you have a publisher mm -hmm. who your label is if you have a label and then after that you can think about putting in a little bit more details like what kind of genre it is what kind of beats per minute etc but the main things that you have to do to get right is uh all of the things that i said along with one other important component which is how to contact you and that can be email and a phone preferably but it can be email yeah. at least the music supervisor or somebody else has the ability to contact you and to follow up with you as they need to it looks like i'm frozen am i frozen you're not okay that's so weird i'm frozen on my own screen it's very weird. All right, well I'll I'll just keep going and looking at myself frozen. <laughs> so those are the basic things that I think you need to do uh basically before you do anything else. That's amazing. Yeah, uh, you know, I think that one of the things that um uh, by the way, I I'm glad that you, you know, you mentioned the splits. Very important. A lot of people don't think about that. And they go uh and they jam live with people and they do all kinds of uh, amazing content uh, sorry about that guys no 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 worries no worries what i was saying is that a lot of people um don't think about the splits and then they go and they jam yep. live they they do something amazing and the next you know th th there's an argument about about who did what you know and right. so and so that happens all the time uh and now as far as like i want to talk a little bit about about you specifically how you uh, got into the business uh, of working with supervisors? You know, how how did that come about? about uh, what's your relationship aside from obviously the the Sync Summit? 
how do you work with supervisors and how do you uh, more importantly um, how do you pick uh, artists you work with how do you pick the music those are some great questions so I'll give you a little bit of my background and you know how sync summit and my licensing company which is called Disconic, uh, how they came up uh, basically I come from a ba- I come from a background that's music and technology and um, I worked on some technology things that had nothing to do with music and I had did some music things that have nothing to do with technology sync has to do with both um, basically I learned a lot about licensing of assets over the years and intellectual property and um, I saw the music industry change from what we knew in the 90s uh, when I first really started to get involved in the industry it was a very different industry and you made money off of uh, your label deal and the label system was very tightly controlled and uh, most money was made from selling CDs yeah now that was all disintermediated with Napster LimeWire Kazaa a thousand different other services and and eventually Steve Jobs yeah, I mean, and then you had, uh, yeah, you had, you had the rain sort of bring it back a little bit with uh, iTunes, but still the cap was let out of the bag, so to speak, and everybody thought that uh, music was supposed to be free and people wouldn't pay for it, and they didn't pay for it. That's the sad reality. Yeah. Um, and now with streaming, yeah, it's sort of controlled and regulated, and people are paying for it, but artists aren't getting any money from their streaming of their music and the reason that I say all of this is really important for why I got into sync I uh, I looked at this marketplace about eight years ago and I said okay I was working at a uh, venture capital firm at the time and I said okay I want to leave this uh, world and I want to go back into music because it's my real it's my real passion yeah, yeah. and I looked at it though like, like a VC I thought okay well where's the future in this where is the money going to be 10 20 30 years from now in different aspects of the industry and at that point streaming was really just starting to take off but uh, you know I didn't really see it as a place where there was going to be a lot of money because the consumer was trying money for music at this point uh, for listening to it. So I thought, okay, um, there's three places. Licensing for media is one, i.e. sync, and creation of music for media. Mm-hmm. Um, touring and merchandise. Yeah. And I thought, okay, out of those three businesses, I really understand intellectual property, and I've always had a passion and belief for the connection of brands and advertising and music to come together to create audiences and to sell products and to sell music at the same time. So that's sort of where my head was at. Yeah. I wasn't looking I wasn't looking as much, to be honest, at the storytelling world, you know, the world of okay, putting music into T V shows and films. I was looking much more at like, okay, you know what? Uh, I understand the value of a deal where Beyonce gets paid $35 million to be in a Sprint commercial, let's say, back in the day. And uh, she has a Beyonce phone, and then they put all this money behind something right before her album drops, and they sync a couple of the songs and put them in the phone. So at the end of the deal, whether you think that was too much money, money for, for Sprint, Sprint to spend, spend you know, yeah, I'm, I'm not, not going to debate, debate that. that. They, they spent, spent a ton of money. It went into her pocket, number one, but also it propelled the launch of the album and added an extra marketing budget of a few billion dollars which is what sprint usually spends when they go out there and they do a big marketing push what? and that go- and, and and that's basically like what i saw was like how an artist on the top level could leverage the power of advertising campaigns and brands to lift their product to lift their music and to bring it to audiences in a scale and a frequency that wasn't possible in any other medium so that was sort of where i came from when i got into this business i said well i think that's really the power of music and media coming together now when i got into this business i didn't really know what a music supervisor was really sort of kind of i really didn't you know i i knew how to license music for like my business before in music was uh mobile so i understood a lot about ringtones and how that worked and i realized 
you know, um, mobile assets, ringtones, videos, whatever, they're, they're just the same as anything else in terms of the intellectual property portion. It's the content that's different. So I thought, okay, I believe that this is an interesting area to get into. So I'm going to start up a company and uh, I'm going to uh, become a licensing agent because I think there's something really interesting in there. Now, um, when I started this up, I didn't really know that many music supervisors. There were a couple that I met uh, through friends who were really instrumental in helping me mm-hmm. as uh, mentors to learn the business. And in addition to that, I got in touch with some old contacts of mine um, at Billboard who have always had a good relationship who uh, let me write a couple of articles about licensing. And it helped me to build my um, profile a little bit and to get started in the media. And then from there, um, I thought, okay, you know what? Um, if I'm going to really get to know a lot about this marketplace, I need to gather people around me. And, you know, I, that's how I started Sync Summit. I decided I was going to start an event where I gathered the people around me who are the decision makers and the creators. Really? So people, yeah, so people from labels, people from publishers, people from, uh, you know, TV and film and, advertising all the major players on both sides and artists to come together to sit in a room a visual uh, originally my vision was like 50 60 people at Soho house here in new york but we ended up taking over two floors of Soho house and doing 200 people so there was a market need for what we were doing and sync summit became its own entity which i had never i'll be honest i had never uh, really thought about it being its own thing when we first did it i thought oh it's just going to be a little thing that we're going to do once a year at Soho house and bring a few people together and then from there it became this big thing where we do these events you know as you know Jalen all over the world we do them in Tokyo we do them in Singapore we do them in Canada and Mexico and New York and Nashville and LA and uh, India soon right India we do a couple of panels there we're probably going to do one in uh, Berlin this year Uh, we're calling Sinktoberfest Uh, just uh, I'm talking to one of the in one of the record labels I work with over there. And so wow. that's sort of our network. And we do a lot of online listening sessions with music supervisors who listen to music too. And the whole reason why we do all of this is there's two reasons. First of all, it helps me and the people that I work with to be in the center of everything, to know who the players are yeah. on the sell side and the buy side. Uh, so we know who the buyers are, we know who the sellers are, and we're sort of abreast of what's going on because we have a forum that brings them together that's number one yeah um and number two as we've been doing this for a few years i've gone from you know a novice to you know expert expert level and how the you know the gears in this industry work and who is really involved in it and what the sort of pain points are in the industry and the challenges and the opportunities that exist right now Mm -hmm. and I'm going to get to the second part of your question in a second, but the one thing I'm going to say about our market, whether you're creating music and then looking to get it licensed, or you're looking to be a composer or a creator with a production house, mm-hmm. is that this is the best time ever for musicians who have Amazing. great music and great sco- skills to be in this business. And I'll tell you why. Because there is more content and more advertising being created than ever before. There are more studios that exist than there ever were before. You've got all of the different online studios. You've got Hulu, you've got Disney Plus, Apple, you've got um, Netflix, of course, you've got um, Amazon, and they're all, I talk to all of them on a regular basis, and and they are all, they're not just competing, they're creating huge amounts of content that they haven't done before. And this is in addition to the content that's being created on the regular network level, you know, on the regular ABC, CBS, NBC level. Right. There's tons of content that are be, that's being created by all of these different networks. And then, of course, I didn't mention YouTube. I mean, that's one of the biggest ones. YouTube Originals is creating an enormous amount of content. And then on the other side, and this is really important to point out, is that there are a lot of um, a lot more advertising that's being created now for online platforms yes. and there's also a lot of music that's being used for apps you know a lot of apps are interactive and immersive and they need music for those apps so yeah. it's a great it's a great time to be in this business it's the greatest time um, to be in the business i believe 
yeah, it really is. It's a great time to be in this business. By the way, scale. FYI, just, just so you know, uh, this is awesome. Someone just asked, uh, hey, what is the first step to becoming a sync agent? <laughs> That's cool. Uh, well, the first step to becoming a sync agent, that's a good question. I mean, you need to do two things. The first thing is you probably need to do some research in how everything works. Uh, you can go to our blog. It's syncsummit.com slash blog. You can probably get a lot of information there to get started. But basically, uh, there's two things you need to do. One thing is you need to meet a lot of music supervisors and build relationships with them because you need to get to know who they are, what they do, what kind of jobs they do, and what, how they do business. Mm -hmm. And that is really only done, in my estimation, I mean, you can only do so much online. You have to go to events, and I don't care if it's my event, I mean, I'm, I'm glad if you come to my events, of course, but uh, whether it's my event or whether it's somebody else's event, you know, the Guild of Music Supervisors does stuff, uh, we do stuff, there's other events like Medem or some of our partners like FIMPRO in Mexico or Canadian Music Week in Canada. And uh, all of these events um, have components where music supervisors come in and they speak and they talk to people and you can get to know some of these people. And you, once you start to get to know them, you can say to them, look, I'm, I'm putting together a sync agency and um, I would like to be included on your lists for future briefs. Mm -hmm. And then they'll say, oh, okay, well, you know what? Uh, why don't you uh, start off by uh, telling me what kind of music you have and um, maybe you can send me a few samples, uh, a few sample playlists. So that's the other side of it. So you need to go out and meet people, but at the same time, you need to sort of choose a lane. You need to go out there and find some music that you can represent because after all, that's what an agent is more than anything else is it's somebody who represents other people and those other people can be labels they can be publishers they can be individual artists producers uh management companies i i do all i do them all um and the thing is you know if you don't have a body of music that you're working with you know obviously if somebody's sending you some briefs and you can't answer i mean you don't have a business so you have to have some music and go out there and find some music that you have passion for but you need to also go out there and establish relationships with music supervisors i was just gonna and, say um, that yeah I, I was gonna say that i mean at the end of the day relationships relationships you need you need to have that that experience and, and know people uh to connect that music exactly. to connect that music to something exactly and you know the good thing is is that music supervisors they're always looking for good music they're always looking for things that uh, they can work with but i will tell you the reality of the business is like any other business if it comes down to somebody who's been a friend of mine for seven years uh versus um somebody that they don't know and the music is the same quality they're going to go with me every time it's just a fact of life And I need to put that out there. So, you know, you got to go out there and make those relationships so that you can be one of those people that if a music supervisor is faced with a choice that, you know, everything looks good, they're going to hook you up basic, before the person that they don't know. That, that, so that's, that's key. That's that's key. But the other thing that's key in, in terms of the relationships is just being, you know, being there and being helpful to people and being being somebody who has the attitude of a problem solver i think that's one thing that you really have to look at if you're going into this business um you should think to yourself if you're a sync agent i'm going to go into connecting with music supervisors trying to help them solve problems with my clients my roster and my music that i have a passion for mm. and you really have to think about that If you can help them to solve a problem, then you can, you know, pitch the music. If you don't have the music they're asking for, one of the worst things that you can do is to send them music anyway. Um, if, wow, yeah. It, 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 that's, and, and a lot of people do that. You know, I've had people when I have worn a music supervisor's hat where I asked them for replacement music that was like Italian music from the 1950s. 
and um, I got a lot of things that just weren't what I had asked for. Um, but also, I got music that wasn't even in Italian, but I specifically asked for it. And that's the surest way to get a music supervisor to never take you seriously again, wow. especially if you're a sync agent or a publisher or a label, because people don't have to for people that can't follow direction. Direction. Yeah, Um, exactly. Now, with that said, if you have a good relationship with a music supervisor, you can go, hey, I just got this really cool stuff. I'm going to turn you on to it. They'll always do it. You know, if it, I mean, like somebody who's a friend of mine, if I say to them, like, hey, I've got something cool to turn you on to, if you're not wasting their time, they'll listen to it, you know, because they have the relationship. But if you are building your relationships, you need to stay in a lane and you need to work your music and you need to be responsive and on point with problem solving solutions with every email and every communication you have with yeah. them. By the way, uh, just so that you know, on the screen, the viewers are seeing currently your website. They're seeing oh, that's very uh, cool. Excellent. Sync, uh, summit.com so that they can understand that I, sh- uh, you know, I also share the the blog on there. But if they go to the actual website, all the information they could possibly want is on there. Uh, number one. Number two, they can contact you, which is crazy to to be able to be uh, able to send you emails or something, right? And and three. Look, and more I have to say, say I, I I have this crazy policy, mm-hmm. and I'm going to make a joke. Uh, I don't know how many people remember Rob Ford, the guy who was the uh, mayor of uh, Toronto. Yeah. You know, I think I think most people remember him. But he said something I always thought was really cool. As the mayor of a big city, he said, "You know what?" I put my I put my phone number out there. I put my email address out there, and I will answer. That's exactly how I am. Yeah. Now I may not answer the phone all the time, but I get a few hundred emails a day, and I do my best to answer people, to yeah. answer each and every email because I think that's important. It is but important. That's me. So I'm I'm Mark at SingSummit.com. It's really easy, and yes, you can get in touch with me. I'm happy to answer any inquiries you have, and. You know, I'll try to help as much as I can. Um, well, you know. well, Mark, one thing I want to get into real quick is that, well, number one, I want uh, I want them to know about your next event. But more importantly, aside from your event, which, by the way, you have to go to an event because people don't understand that people meet people face to face. And this is how they remember them. Uh, uh, these, yep. these supervisors get hundreds and hundreds and hundreds, if not thousands of submissions. They're not going to look at you before they're going to look at somebody they know personally. So it, you got to go meet these people, number one. So so look for the events on the website. Sign up to an event today. And number two, can you talk a little bit about the listening session and what that is? Yeah, I'll give you a little bit of information on that right now. And I also want to answer another question, if I could. Maybe I'll do it afterwards about what my criteria is for uh, who I work with. Yeah, yeah. Because I think that's important for people to know. Okay, I'll do that first. So basically, you know, my criteria, if I wanted to say really generally, I mean, it's kind of a goofy answer, but it's like, yeah, anybody who makes great music that I could use. That's a that's a bad answer, but that's sort of an answer to, in a very general sense. Yeah, you know, yeah. music that I think is really good that I can uh, present to uh, my network. But what I try to do is I try to stay in the lane as much as possible. And um, what I mean by that is that music supervisors tend to look at people as being specialized in one area or another more than they are in another area. And I work with all genres of music, which is great. And music supervisors know that. Mm -hmm. But, you know, I'm really known for bringing a lot of um, international music uh, to and electronic music to um, music supervisors. So basically, you know, for me, I represent most of the labels in uh, Japan. I represent a couple of labels in Korea, in Southeast Asia, in Europe, in South America. So basically, I bring in music from all over the world, and people come to me with searches when they have mu- when they want music like that. But also, um, I work with music from Nashville. I work with music from Miami. I work with music from New York, LA, whatever. I just want it to be something that I have passion for, and I think that that's probably the best way I can put it. Is that 
I look for music I have passion for and music that sort of stays in that lane that I talked about that is something that mm. I'm known for representing. Like if people are looking for folk music, I'm point blank not going to be their guy. If they're looking for uh, alternative music, that's not what I do really, unless it's uh, unless it's in a foreign language. I have some Japanese and Indian music that's like that. But you know, I really try to stay in a certain area because that really helps you when you're connecting music to music supervisors and to the industry at large. And I think that's good advice for everybody. Like yeah. You don't want to go out there. You don't want to go out there and say, I can do anything. And I'll tell you why, maybe you can do anything, but you know, that's not what people want to hear. They want to hear like, you know, I can do really good trap. I can do really good beats. I can do really good folk music. I can, you know, I can, I can do great funk music or, you know, I do like K-pop music, whatever it is, you need to do it well. And you need to be able to represent that and say like, this is, this is what I do. And, you know, I've got love for every type of music there is out there. Um, but, you know, when it comes down to it, I think that the most important thing is that you're able to present what you do as something that's unique and not say, oh, by the way, I've done all of this like country pop music over here for like 80 percent of my music, but I can also do hip hop. It's like nobody wants to hear that. <laughs> it's just it's just the truth. Nobody wants to hear that. And, you know, if you're talking about production libraries and creating music for that, that's we can have another discussion about that world because people do create music for different genres if they work with that, those things. But if you're trying to license music, create your best music. That's wow. the best thing I can say. This is so true. Very true. Uh, cool. Let's see. And we have, we have a, a question. Do you, do you want to hear a question from someone? or? Absolutely. I love questions. You know me. Yeah. Uh, let's see. Uh, if I'm a writer, how can I start yeah. to collaborate with people internationally? You know, it's a really good question. I mean, going to this, this sort of like jumps us off to our next point because yeah. it is hard to find other, it is hard to find other writers. Um, especially, you know, you can go to co-writing workshops, things like that. But if you want to work with people on an international level, um, one of the things that I can suggest is we have a Slack channel for our listening sessions where a lot of people collaborated, have collaborated and been work together who are literally all over the world. Wow. So I'm going to give that, I'm going to give that Slack channel to you and you can introduce yourself. This is like all the hundreds of people that have been in our listening sessions have access to it. So, you know, when you go there, you'll actually meet people from the Middle East, from Asia, from Europe, and from the U.S., Mexico, you know, I think we have somebody in Panama, in Colombia, and, and from all over the world. That's amazing. So let me just give that to you. Um, and you can go ahead and put it in the uh, chat area. Yeah. By the way, there's a chat and, here you uh, can put it on. You can write it okay, on. Okay, I'll do that. You can write it on the chat. I'll copy paste it. Yeah. Okay. Give me just a second here. I just want to see where we put this. Um, okay. Top right hand. Give Give me a second. Yeah, I'm looking at it. I'm looking at I, I have to find the URL that I just oh, talked it, about yeah, yeah. now that I talked about it. Very good. Uh, yeah, yeah, this is all really. This second. is all really, uh, uh, obviously, incredibly useful information, uh, and I think that um, that one of the things that that most people uh, don't know how to do is build these relationships internationally because they don't have the access. You know, uh, but it's actually, it's absolutely true. And look, I mean, I would ask you if you can tell people what you think. But what I think you need to do is you need to go out there and, um, you know, you can meet people through our channel mm -hmm. and, um, you know, you can certainly attend some international events, pick an area that you want to uh, connect with. And well, um, I I'll you tell know. you what, I'll tell you one, one of the things that I think that everyone should do is uh, one thing that I always think about is like in a moment like this, for example, where where you and I are here speaking and, and you in particularly are giving away all this amazing information. 
uh, that I don't, you know people usually have to travel very far or pay a lot of money to 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 hear or see right uh, you know yeah I, I think that what happens is like let's say whoever's on the chat right now and then I'm calling you out right now this is uh, I'm doing this on purpose uh, you 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 should have two or three or four or five people from your own uh, crew from your own team uh, hearing this information understanding how this works uh, sharing the information you need to be enrolling people into this vision because this is one vertical for example that can generate money today and so uh, if if you're the only one uh, receiving this information you're not going to be able to share the information you know how it is uh, it, it gets lost in the grapevine it doesn't get to the yeah. source the way that it should uh, coming from Mark and so I think that if that's one of the first things that I'd say uh, first advice as, a, as an entrepreneur find other people in your team that believe in, in your vision and then have them be here like if uh, let's say if there's 10 15 people here now each person should have three or four people that are coming on here right uh, that's number yeah. one number two as far as the networking aspect of it uh, you know this is how you start connecting dots uh, you never know you know I remember like being in Miami and we wanted to shoot some videos and, and we couldn't afford to, to have a, a specific house let's say to shoot a video and the next thing you know a friend of a friend of a friend had a boat and we shot the most amazing video on a boat because again linking and utilizing your network uh, is, is how it, it gets done nowadays so I think that um, that that's one way to to really start moving this, all this information and and start creating more and more yep. uh, amplifying uh, the resources out there. It's absolutely true. I couldn't agree more. And uh, I think that you know if you want to if you want to network with people if you want to connect with people you got to get out there and it can be on the local level. Or it can be on the international level. And also, if you go and join up our, on our Slack channel, I guarantee you're going to meet some awesome people. There are a lot of people that have collaborated internationally, writing songs, producing them over the internet, and actually getting them synced. And I have nothing to do with any of that. They just do it on their own, which is the coolest thing. You know, I'm not, I'm not representing, I, I'm friends with all of them, but I'm not representing actually most of those artists that are there. So I find it really, really cool that we've created this sort of international online community where people can go and they can create music. So that's, so do follow that link, osro.com slash slack TOS. I think that's, a really useful thing to do but more useful is to go out there and attend an event and um, of course I'm going to put a link to our sync summits right there at syncsummit.com slash events and um, we're having events in uh, this year we're going to have two events in uh, Japan because of the Olympics we're going to have one that's just about sports and brands and that's going to be in June which is um, going to be late June and uh, then we've got uh, one before that in New York on June 11th and 12th. We've got one before that in uh, Nashville on May 15th and 16th. You are busy. Uh, no, I'm not done yet. And we've, but we've got more events than that that we're doing with partners all over the place. But we also have um, our Tokyo event is going to be on uh, October 29th and 30th. And then our LA event is on December 2nd and 3rd. So there's all of that going on. You should check out what we've done. Basically, we get a ton of music supervisors in the room. They talk to everybody, they exchange cards, they listen to a little bit of music. We do some showcases. Uh, we have some fun at receptions and people generally get to connect and to know each other. So the online listening sessions, I wanted to get back to that because yeah. you asked me about that yeah. about 10 minutes ago. Mm -hmm. And the listening sessions, uh, basically, I decided to start these because I'm always looking for more ways that I can help artists to connect directly with music supervisors, because that's the biggest question people always give me. And I'm like, look, it's really hard to connect with music supervisors. So I thought, well, how can I do this and make the and get it so that the music supervisors will actually listen to people's music? I thought, OK, you know what? 
I'm going to have to pay them to listen to music. That's the quick, that's like the most basic way. I think a lot of music supervisors just don't have, you know, they just don't have the time or the energy. So I said, okay, you know what? We're going to do these sessions together where, you know, there is a fee involved, but um, the music supervisor listens to people's music. We publish it on our website so that other people can hear it. Mm-hmm. And then uh, people get a video chat and they get one-to-one communication with the music supervisor. And then afterwards, the music supervisors almost always give out their email addresses and say to people to contact them directly. That's brilliant. And it's really cool and everybody gets their music evaluated and listened to on a real serious one-to-one level now i can never guarantee to anybody that attending one of those sessions is going to get your music into a tv show or a film or an ad Mm -hmm. but what i can say is that you're going to come out of it with a lot more knowledge and information than you did before and you're going to have expert intelligence from the people that make the decisions on what use um, in your head now so that you understand more about the process and about how your music fits in the process creatively and from, you know, all of the back end sort of stuff. Let me, and, let me, let me um, put you on pause for one second. Let me just give yep. people a, a glimpse, uh, a, a, just a simple understanding as to what you're saying. Let's pretend for a second that I am this music supervisor for, uh, uh, little liars or something well i don't know i'm just throwing out a tv show pretty little there. liars pretty, pretty little, little liars. liars there you that's... go that's see you can tell me and watch that show i should i hear it's good uh but anyway hey, so the music supervisor is a good friend but anyway go ahead yeah exactly so let's say well i you know uh this show doesn't exist anymore but but uh yeah. in 2018 we have rodney jerkins uh in our <laughs> in our event at the conference so that was awesome Right. Uh, but anyway, so the point is, let's say I am that guy or a girl and uh, I get into a listening session with you. And these are the type of high value individuals that you bring on board. And that's what I'm trying to explain to people that is like out of nowhere, you have these uh, the ability to have your music heard by these incredible people at the top of the game. And I don't think I, I, I think. I don't even know how much you should charge for that. I don't even know. I think you're you're doing an incredible job by providing something that is tangible to people, uh, and and it's a great investment. Well, thank you for saying that. And it's so funny that you mentioned Pretty Little Liars because the music supervisor for that, uh, Chris Moller, is a good friend, and he's done uh, several of our listening sessions, and he's one of the best music supervisors out there in tv and film he also did the film get out and he wow. and he just i think he just finished antebellum which is um a new uh I, i'm not sure if jordan peele directed that let me take a look i'm i i'm i'm like a stickler for information so now that i mention it i gotta see find if uh <laughs> find out. if if that was uh antebellum uh film it stars janelle Mon- Mollet- monet and um let's see eric lang jenna malone it's it's and uh uh gabori uh, sadebe so it's um it's coming out in april and he is the music supervisor for it yeah. uh let's see here yeah the directors are jared bush and chris berentz so it's it's actually um an amazing film produced by the same people uh that produced uh, get out and us wow. so it's yeah it's pretty amazing um and um he, those are the kinds of films that he works on so he's he's pretty much a master of his game they call him the they actually call him in the industry the prince of darkness because he deals with a lot of dark subject matter usually and sort of sort of like dark uh tv and films and <laughs> i like uh, that nickname though that's funny but but he's a re- actually a really nice guy and a lot of fun but he's one of the best in the game and he's an example of the kind of caliber of people that we have uh just this past sunday we had a guy named um uh alec stern alec is the director of music for ddb chicago and that means miller light mcdonald's wow skittles whole bunch of other brands yeah so these are the kinds of people that we bring on we had a guy named david Heyman, who is from a group called Supergroup in um a music supervisor collective called supergroup that's based in toronto and they deal with like 
God, I think I think I, I, I feel like they do almost like half of the TV shows in uh, Canada. And the reason why that's important for people in the U.S. is that Canada is a production place for basically like a third of our TV shows. So, you know, wow. he does a lot of really interesting stuff. And, you know, in the history of us doing this, we had so many people on from... You know, the music supervisor for Stranger Things to the music supervisor for The Man in the High Castle to many, many different advertising music supervisors to people from Vice and on and on and on. And so my question, my all, question to the to the viewers right now, I have a question for you viewers right now. I just posted on there the listening sessions. I put the, the link on there. So... Uh, I need to see that who's going to be clicking on that who's going to be signing up for that because if you want to be a part of this business this is what you need to do today yeah it's definitely good to get into these sessions and be a part of it and you know we have we have one session that's coming up that uh it's funny there's one session there for uh, february 20th third mm -hmm. that uh says uh it actually says mick lloyd but uh we've switched mick lloyd with a much better i mean i love mick he's a good friend of mine but we're switching him out for a much better um person a guy by the name of josh rabinowitz who um he is a music supervisor from advertising that ran um all of the music for gray advertising which is gillette and volvo and a whole bunch of other brands for 14 years and now he is um doing lots and lots of different projects and different uh brands and advertising as a music supervisor so that one's going to be a really really interesting session brilliant and by and, the way um, most people don't know this uh but when i started my career um which was a, a long time ago uh but let's just say in the, in the middle of the 2000s I got an opportunity to do a whole lot. Actually, it started with voiceovers. I started doing a lot of voiceovers first. Oh, cool. uh, a lot of international Spanish and Spanglish voiceovers. And then next thing you know, I got asked to do, um, uh, uh, I think my first big one was Nissan. I did Nissan and then I did Doors. Uh, you know, I was the, you know, the liquor, that's, uh, is that a, a scotch or a whiskey? Whiskey. Uh, it's a, it's a whiskey, yeah, yeah. Scotch whiskey. Yeah. yeah. Uh, so I did that, and then next thing you know, I did Coca Cola, and anyway, I ended up doing a ton of music and a ton of voiceover, like rap, Spanish raps, and blah blah blah, and whatever. And so, uh, guys, I got to tell you, the money, the checks that come from that uh, is not even funny. This is incredible. Uh, and so that was in the in the mid 2000s. I can only imagine what is happening now. Oh, there is a lot of stuff that's happening in terms of, uh, you know, the kinds of money that people are getting. Sometimes it's small on the front end and very large on the back end, depending on how many times it's uh, seen. And, um, you know, that, that's a whole nother conversation. I could talk to you about what the business models are and how much people are paid for one thing versus another. But, uh, you know, people are making a living by just doing music and uh, submitting music for uh, TV and film and ads. Yeah, by the way, um, someone and, just asked one question, which is awesome. Can you speak yep. to getting music into the gaming world and if the process is different? You know, the process is always going to be the same. No matter who you, no matter what kind of media it is, it's roughly the same. Basically, you know, you work with a sync agent or you build up the relationships on your own. You send music out to a music supervisor and then the music supervisor will listen to the music and say okay this is something that we can use and then from there you do you put together a deal and hopefully the deal makes sense for everybody everybody gets paid and everybody's happy um, but what i will say about music for games that you need to keep in mind is that for games games are not linear and ex and what i mean is that you know a tv show or a film or an ad go from point a to point b usually And they're not usually that complicated. Maybe they go point A to point F to point C sometimes if it's a complicated thing. But it's usually pretty linear. Yeah. Games are 
basically a lot of unknown stuff going on. There's sort of a path from beginning to end, but it's more like an arc. And it's kind of like life. Like you go into a game, you're entering a life. So certain things are triggered by your actions. And that includes music cues and stings and stems and instrumentals and different things that are happening in the game. Coding, are matched coding, up to coding. That. So what you need to do I think first and foremost from a creative point of view is make sure that you have stems for everything that you have and make sure they're ready. Make sure that you've got instrumentals ready and of course the full versions, but also be ready to get into the studio or get on your computer and make some stings or customize things for them. Those things are all really, really important. Brilliant. Yeah. And, and that's that's what I think the main thing is, is that you need to be a little aware of how things work with the game industry. They ask for something a little bit special in comparison to uh, somebody in TV or film who's, I think their needs are going to be a bit more basic. Okay, so uh, immediately, immediately, what is the very next event that you're doing? Well, let's see, we've got two events coming up. The first event that I'm doing is going to be online on February 23rd with Josh Rabinowitz and I'm going to send you a link uh, in the next I'll send you a link in the next couple of minutes actually I'm, we're, we're actually just putting up the page right now so in about 10 minutes that session will be ready and it'll give you a little introduction to him so the listening session is on Sunday the 23rd uh, then uh, the next event that we're going to be doing is um, in Nashville on May 15th and 16th and that event is going to be I think you're going to see it's going to be a great event we've got Chris Clark who is the head of music for Leo Burnett the Chicago ad agency yeah. and we've got a bunch of music supervisors already lined up beyond him uh, and then after that we have our event in New York which is um, June 11th and 12th so we've got that but in addition to that um, if you're going to be at South by Southwest, we're going to be doing a panel on the 13th of March. Mm -hmm. And that panel is going to be basically kind of like what we do at the listening sessions. We're going to listen to people's music and give our That's comments on it, awesome. which is going to be fun. And then um, we're also going to be doing a basically a, like how to how to get yourself into the sync industry uh, workshop yes. at Canadian Music Week which is later on in May. Mm -hmm. And we're going to be doing, like I just spoke to my friend who I work with who runs a conference called FIMPRO in Mexico. That's at the end of May. We're going to do this really ambitious thing that involves directors and music supervisors across different forms of media, kind of like a, a half day of different kinds of programming. So if you're interested in that, I'm going to give you a uh, URL that you can check out because I, I think if you can get yourself down to Mexico it's the best conference one of the best conferences I go to all year and yeah, um, yeah go ahead and find that for me in the meantime I just want to remind the viewers right now um, my question to you is do you want to put aka sync your music on film TV commercials uh, any kind of content any kind of media if you want to do that that's what this conversation is about if you just joined that's what this conversation is about so make sure that you go to the links that are on the on the chat right now click on those links go to syncsummit.com check out Mark's company check out what he does and how he does it and uh, of course you can always watch this again so you can hear all the uh, information but more importantly uh, just make sure that you connect you go to the event uh, if you know guess what they happen in a city near you I guarantee it so New York LA Nashville Canada in May uh, there's events all over the world um, and like I said this is where you're gonna meet the people you got it uh, talk to people I know that you guys uh, for the most part are used to just texting each other <laughs> Or, 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 or doing things <laughs> on, on Instagram that's cute but when it comes to the business of music a lot of times you're gonna have to go and meet people talk to people get to know people uh, and earn their trust uh, you gotta you gotta bring value and they'll, they'll bring value to you absolutely super super important man this has been uh, amazing uh, I'm really really excited that, that I got to have you on here tonight 
Um, is there? It was what, a pleasure for me to be here. Thank you. What are? Uh, uh, give us a couple of more little gems. A couple of more things that you can leave people with, of things that they can do right now to get prepare for syncing their music or sending it to an agent like you. Okay. Well, everything that I said made a lot of sense. I think. But, yes. You know, make sure you work out your splits. Make sure you've got good metadata. Make sure that your music is mixed properly. Master it if you can. And finally, one thing I'm going to say is that uh, you need to be politely persistent. Don't email a music supervisor with a really long email. Don't get right to the point. Give a link that streams. Don't send them any attachments. Just do things that are efficient in introducing yourself and be polite with it. And um, if you want more information, really, our blog has a ton of it. Yeah. So if you go to singsummit.com slash blog, it's all free and it's all there for you. And of course, you know, I would say if you're really interested in meeting music supervisors, getting in front of them, getting to know them, getting to know a lot about the business and most importantly, really getting the tools that you need to really do well in this business. Um, I would suggest going to one of our events, uh, um, whether it's an online event or a live event. I think live, it's always just a better option. There's, there's nothing like... I think so too, because you meet more people. Yeah, but if you cannot attend, I guarantee you that uh, going live... I mean, I, you do all kinds of webinars as well. You do all kinds of things, you know, like this all the time. And more importantly, yep. I think sign up for a listening session if you have music that you believe can be monetized, you know, so sign up for it. And uh, but anyway, I want yeah. I want to thank you for your time. I know that your time is super precious. I know you and I will probably catch up tomorrow and really, really get down to, to some of the things that we Absolutely. are doing together. But uh, I'm grateful for your time. I, I, I much love, always got love for you and for the knowledge that... Hey, I got love for you too. Absolutely. You, no, you, always do. You really show, uh, uh, you really are out there for the independent artists. And I really love that. I appreciate that. Thank you. Thank you. You know, I mean, I have a lot of friends that are artists. Some of them are famous. Some of them are not famous. They're all talented. And one of the things that I like to see is I like to see them succeed. And if I can help them to succeed, then I feel like I've done something good today. So I hope I can help you all too. And, um, you know, go on to uh, singsummit.com and uh, check out listening sessions. Uh, we're going to have the uh, updated web page for the session for Josh Rabinowitz in a couple of minutes. And you'll see his, uh, you'll see his, um, information. He's a really top music supervisor and it's really going to be worthwhile, um, to take part in that if you want to. Love it. All right. So with that said, uh, it was, um, so nice to spend some time with you here. And, um, I hope that everybody has, um, benefited from the time oh, yeah. as much as I've benefited from it. They love and, it. And, um, you know, I just, uh, want everybody to, um, have a great, great evening and thanks for being here uh -huh. and thanks for being in music. Appreciate you, man. Thank you so much. Okay, appreciate you too. Take. All right, that was uh, amazing. That was awesome. So cool. Um, I mean, I'm gonna stay here just a few more minutes. If you guys have any any questions or if you got um, anything you want to tell me, anything you want to share with me, um, let me know. I mean, I'm I'm here just a few more minutes, uh, but hurry up because I'm hungry. So. <laughs> uh, let me know if you got anything that uh, you want me to share with you anything that um, any questions that you have I'm, I'm by the way I'm, I'm reading the, the chat right now so you if you guys can thank you mark everybody's saying thank you mark so thank you mark love that let's see um Put a little bit of inspirational music in the background. That's just a, a, a instrumental track. Um, it's not my track. That's just a, you know one of those tracks you can play in the background when you talk. It's it's free, so you can always find those royalty free tracks. 
I'm not posting any of my tracks because uh, we're working on something specific. But um, hey, boom, 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 boom. If you are interested in getting music entrepreneur hats, oh, by the way, wait, 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 wait. I know what I meant to tell you. Music entrepreneur this coming year, November 2020. November 2020. This is 20 when it's gonna happen. So uh, we're going to set up a link. I think it's gonna go live March 1st. Um, and you're gonna be able to buy your tickets and trust me you want to buy your tickets March 1st you want to buy your tickets as soon as possible because this year is gonna be grand like I said we have um, Philip right hand man co-writer to um, to uh, Bruno Mars I invited him he said yes that's a, a, a huge name uh, and we have a bunch of other people. I mean, I'm just I'm throwing out his name because we had a conversation about it. But I mean, if you've been to our conference, you've already I don't got to convince you and tell you who it is that's coming. You already know it's huge people. So uh, I'm excited that you guys are coming uh, to the conference this year. Uh, if you guys have any other, you know, questions, um, if you have any music to share, if you have any um, concerns. Um, yeah, let me know. Let me see. I'm trying to read. Christina, the hat is dope. Oh, thank you. Boom, boom, boom. Yeah, you know what? Uh, we'll, we'll have a link uh, in the next few days, maybe in a day or two, where you guys can finally start buying the gear. We have a bunch of gear coming out. Uh, really excited about it. And by the way, you can get these in many different colors. Uh, even now, you can you can start ordering them. So I'll make sure that you guys have access to it. Um, is it possible you could put all or what? Is it? Are you asking for the links? Oh, the the links. Yeah, um, Christina. I want to have with my name. <laughs> all right um i wish i wish this was a music entrepreneur shirt right here i might i might make it a, a music entre, a nike sponsor music entrepreneur uh hoodie why not oh you know what what i just thought about what if i got a hoodie and when you do this it says music entrepreneur on here Whoa, that'd be dope. I think I'm gonna do it. Anyway, it seems like you guys don't have really a lot of questions, so I'm gonna go ahead and uh, let you guys go. I'm excited that you guys were with me. Um, thank you so much for tonight, it's been quite a pleasure. And till next time. See you soon.